Hydrant and Ferber Berkeley Switch. Uh, in a recent video, we talked to you about the concept of letting the dog off the leash. Uh, this concept is extremely important within the world of self-protection, absolutely dominant. Uh, it's also a concept that we've talked about before and being uh, one that is, is lacking in the world of martial arts very often and within the world of, of self-defense programs uh, in, in the civilian mode. Um, the reason why is because they are very technical oriented and they don't go to this factor. It's ugly, people don't want to hear about it. Uh, and there's also other reasons to go into it. But there's a sub thing that goes behind that. There's a building blocks that bring you to that capability, that, uh, to, the ability to take off the leash. One of those building blocks is what they call framing. Framing is, uh, is a term that comes out of the world of sociology and psychology and deals basically with context of how we perceive things. We have basically three different types of, of framing that we're going to talk to here to keep it very simple. Uh, one is basically our self-perception. How do we perceive ourselves? The second, of course, is our capabilities. How do we perceive our capabilities in a given, uh, given subject matter here, the matter of self-protection? Um, and then the third one being, of course, uh, how we frame or how we, we perceive uh, our threat and, and risk scenarios. Uh, that would be a third party, perhaps, or a, a situation, uh, these type of things. Uh, it's, it's very clear to understand that the psychology of humans is set in the manner that if we perceive those balances to be negative, that we have a very good chance of losing here, and we've done that by comparing ourselves and our capabilities as we perceive them against the threat that we perceive, then we will not be aggressive towards it. Vice versa, if we perceive ourselves in a positive fashion, our capabilities in a positive fashion, and we have a realistic vision of, of that threat, there's a very good chance we will be able to go to it and we will be able to do well. So it's a matter of that. This concept of, of not having a good perception will cause you to be a poor, poor performer or worse, hesitate. This concept of hesitation is absolutely deadly because that's the period of time you're clicking off the very most critical points of a violent or coming to violence type of situation. So framing. Now framing is very interesting because if I was to train for years and years and years in a martial art dojo, where they didn't talk about this mentality at all, didn't nurture it, didn't show me the avenues which helped me to grow towards that. Because as I've said previously, an instructor cannot give this to you. We can only open the doors, open the windows, let the light in, so that you can see the opportunities that you can build yourself into that situation where you have that positive frame for this type of situation. In a martial art world, let's perceive where that doesn't take place, I may become extremely good at martial arts. Flying back kicks, jumping kicks, all these different things, sparring like a madman. I could be very, very good. Complication is, my self-perception is I'm very good at martial arts. I'm very good in the dojo. I'm very good in sparring. And when I go outside and I bump into an asocial person who now brings to face a violence to me, there's that hesitation because I'm not familiarized with that situation. I have not been transposed mentally to understand that situation. I don't have that experience, even though I spent years back in the dojo doing all those things. I have a very strong perception, I'm very capable as a martial artist, but I don't have the capability of being a dominator. I don't want to use the word survivor. Dominator. It's very, very important. I'll give you a good example of this. Many times people come up and they say, will you be willing to die for your family? No, sir, I'm not willing to die for my family. That's the correct attitude. Willing to die for your family means that at some end of the spectrum, you're willing to lay it down. I am not willing to lay it down. I'm willing to kill everything around me for my family type of approach. I'm willing to stop at nothing so that I go home type of approach. I'm not laying myself down for anything. I'm taking out everything between me and it. That's the concept of dominance within a certain mind frame and within a certain frame. We're talking about the frame of face-to-face -face with threat. So again, we're talking about that framing concept and how we frame ourselves entering into that, into that world. So I take that consideration of call that a frame and we put it on the shelf. We take another frame, we say, well, I've been training for a long time in a methodology that I know is rock solid. 
Many are, not just this particular one that I teach. Many are, depending on how you arrive at them. So, rock solid. So I, I'm rock solid, it's rock solid, and I have a realistic, now take that second one and put it on the shelf. Now the third component, I have a very realistic understanding of real life. I will not be able to talk this person down. I will not be able to give them a slap and they'll forgive themselves and move away because they've been taught a lesson and they can tell my superior position, they don't give a shit. So our real superior position is understanding their superior position. They perceive themselves as being a dominant in this encounter. They always do. It's not sort of. They do. And so once you start to understand these things and you understand the true frames, and so you're saying, I got this, I got this, and I understand that, I'm okay. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to work this out. And at this situation, this allows you to be dominant. It allows you to take the fight to the opponent. It allows you to complicate his situation with your abilities. And that's what it's all about. Putting this thing to an end as fast as possible. So we have to create situations as instructors which will bring that frame to you. Build that frame in your head. Because if the frame is weak, you're weak. And we have to allow that. This is why this transition helps you outside of life as well. It migrates into your confidence. Your confidence migrates out to the world around you because you are handling in your head capabilities of the worst. It's therefore, comfortable with the least. If I look at a person, I'm a small man, if I look at a person and he's large, and I say to myself, I'm a well-trained small guy who's up against, a, who's defending against a big guy, I've already started to defeat myself. I'm a small guy defending against the big guy. And I'm going to go be aggressive with that attitude? No, I don't think so. I'd rather think of myself as somebody who's got a, a, an aggression thing going on to my benefit. I'd rather think of myself who's got some very violent skills that I can bring to bear that nobody can defend against because they're anatomically universal. I'd rather think of myself in that fashion and keep that frame in my mind and should I create the situation, allow myself to become angry because angry is a dominant strike. It's a dominant psychology. I'm framing everything as I go along to give me the edge. I frame my attitude, I frame my aggression, I frame my positive image of myself, but I maintain the understanding of this individual that he's a real threat, so I take it serious. I don't underestimate his frame, I don't overestimate his frame, I don't care about his frame, I understand he's a real threat. I don't know what that is. We talk about this all the time, we talk about fighting the man who can't be beaten. Why? Because we don't know who everybody is. So when we place that in front of us, it's not a thing that's so overwhelming we can't touch. We do things, we train in a fashion knowing that that man that can't be beaten is a man and that he has those vulnerabilities and we can utilize those to bring him down. If we have the right frame, if we have that ability to go forward, if we have that ability to take the dog off the leash. So that's why framing is so important within this concept of taking the dog off the leash. And that's why it's so important that when you enter a classroom, your instructor has to turn around and say to you, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you change your brain. When you come in here, you're Mr. A. When you're going to leave here, you're going to Mr. A+. Plus because you're going to change something in your mind on how you perceive yourself and your capabilities. And it's going to be real and solid. And I'm going to take you every step of that way with proof and education. No magic. No big wink. No steely stare on how good it was or will be or how capable you are. And you've never got nothing, but you'll come back keep paying me. That's the complication. That's the complication. Because we know that people want to perceive positive. We know that the psychology goes towards positive. So if I want you to keep coming back into my room here, it's very important that I perceive you, I, I give you things to perceive that are, that are positive. So I, I let you believe the realities of outdoors as being different. I let you believe the capability of your methodologies. I let you believe the concepts that your that you're, that you're aerobic conditioning is a dominant thing within a, within a street fight. For hundreds of years, this has not been the situation in, 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 in quick violence. Professional soldiers, different world. Competition fighters, different world. Guy on the street, not the same thing. Fast violence, very quick, very anaerobic, doesn't require a lot of uh, workout, 
for a fast beating, especially for a person who isn't up to gear. So we remember, everybody who's looking for you already thinks they're dominant to you. So if we're talking in terms of dominance and less dominance, because I want to be kind of easy with this, I don't want to get too complicated, we have to construct a situation where we perceive ourselves as being more dominant than less dominant. And that comes through that, that strategic exposure to capability, why the capability is real, validation of capability, validation of yourself, understanding what you go up against. I talk many times to my students, I'm saying, okay, you're going to do this here and you're going to smack him in a particular fashion. And I say, and they go, yeah, yeah, so he'll back off. I say, no, I say, he's going to go nuts. He's going to go crazy. Because the minute that he realizes that he's in a real situation with somebody who knows what the hell's going on, he's not going to back off. He's not going to say, sorry, I picked the wrong guy. He's going to go exponential. Expect it. Know it. Don't give him the chance. Don't hesitate and allow that volcano to explode. Let it explode while you're kicking the crap out of it. That's what you have to do. So it's that concept that goes into it, the framing, the framing, the framing. If I expect him to walk away, if I expect to treat him in a fashion that doesn't hurt him and doesn't hurt me, we're all peaceful, a wonderful thing. It's very wonderful for me in terms of a positive frame of events. But the frame is wrong. And then when I walk into that, like that wrong frame happening in my face, it seconds, milliseconds are happening that are important, then I'm heading down that street to a really bad end. So that, as an instructor, is, is, is a failure on my behalf. So to be a positive instructor capable of producing what I'm promising to produce, then I have to give you the realities of those. And that's the real thing. And then you walk out and you understand the realities and you start looking at life a little bit different. This is the power of framing. It's the power of creating that event where you get to see for yourself the elements that are on your table. You say, my God, I've got that. I got that. I understand that. I'm feeling pretty good about that. I, I do, I'm learning techniques that I get nervous to do in training. Man, I feel good about using them in the street. Not my technique that I gave Bob my best one last night in sparring. We're still around. Bob should be dead or blinded or really critical. So this is the complication. When you know that things are going to work, when you know the capability for missing occurs, when you know that you can recover from failure inside a complication of violence and come to something that's more dominant than, you, than the original one was, then this concept of framing starts to gel into concrete. That concrete is what allows you to let off the leash, get angry, and get the job done. Media, government, police, martial arts schools, on the mass, they try to take you the other way. And they do. The media is everywhere. And what it does is it does not prep you for real life, which makes our job so hard. Thank you very much. Very good.